Networking and Marketing Made Simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Networking and Marketing Made Simple. Super excited for today's episode for a number of reasons. Number one, as you know, it is Thursday, so you know this is another amazing interview episode. And another reason why I'm excited is it's not every day that I get uh, someone of this caliber on the podcast that is helping so many business owners, so many entrepreneurs grow in scale in a different way. Um, and and again, everyone has heard of virtual assistants, you know, VA. But the one thing I love about what this person is doing is expanding past the normal everyday VA and focusing on something called executive level assistance. And we're going to talk about all that and more. Um, she is the CEO of Chatterboss. Uh, so Valerie Chapunsky, welcome to today's episode. Thank you so much. What a great intro. Thank you so much, Scott, for having me. Absolutely. So let before we talk about Chatterboss and you know the, the big difference between executive level assistance to the, your traditional everyday virtual assistant, which again, I think the audience really wants to know, let's go back before we go forward. And if you could kind of stop the tape from rewinding and pick out a pivotal point in your journey that you feel was that catalytic moment for you that set you on this path where it led to Chatterboss, it led to so many other things. You know, what was that moment for you? I love that you asked this question, right? Because as entrepreneurs and as human beings, right, our, our, our lives are lived going forward, but they're understood going backward. And I know that the entrepreneurial journey for many people is like, you would never guess that this is what it is, right? It was not this like very clear linear path. And that's certainly what it was for me, or rather what it was not a linear plan. So I started my career working in advertising. I was an account person and my goal was to become the CEO of an advertising agency. And, um, you know, that's what I was working towards. I got an opportunity to interview as a personal assistant um, for a gentleman that owned um, several businesses. And I guess that that was that pivotal moment, right? I didn't want to go uh, to this interview because I didn't desire to be an assistant because that was not in my plan. Um, but when I showed up, he said, well, do you have a passport and do you have a boyfriend? And I thought, well, this is exactly the kind of work that I don't want to be doing. But what I then later understood was that he was asking me, do I have to ask somebody if I have to travel? Do I have to get permission to leave the country? And can I leave the country? And so this was my kind of uh, entry into working as a personal assistant and later a chief of staff. But yeah, this is an, an, an unlikely thing that it later on allowed me to gain experience as a personal assistant and start Chatterboss. I, I would say that's probably one of the most... Uh... I don't want to say dynamic, but I would say uh, interesting questions to ask someone on an interview because uh, outside looking in, one would perceive that question is potentially sexist or there were ulterior motives involved. But in reality, th that's the mind of the entrepreneur. The big thinker is thinking, OK, you know, does this person have someone to run things past and are they able to travel? Because those are the two biggest needs that I have for what this position is. So very interesting to kind of pose that question in that way. Now, from the, 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 the world that you're in now compared to the world that you came from, you know, doing the virtual assistant work, you know, doing the head of operations, working for someone else. What would you say was the biggest learning lesson or experience that you learned working for someone else that allowed you to then 
better not only open and have your own business, which you do, but lead others the way that you were led? It's interesting. I think that people become entrepreneurs a lot of the time, not because it's something that they've decided to do. They've It's come out of a necessity. And a lot of the time, it's because we have a very hard time being managed by others. And the only person that can manage us is ourselves. Um, I had a very, very hard time working for other people because I always wanted to do whatever it is that I wanted to do. Um, but that experience was necessary. I wouldn't have been able to start Chatterboss without that. And, you know, I, I learned to work as a team and that was very, very important for me because I'm, I'm, I'm very individualistic as a person. And so I just want to get things done on my own. I don't want others to slow me down. Um, and a lot of the times, right. Um, my, at, at my core, uninterested in the opinion of others, what actually being in this role allowed me to do was to soften to the need for others for working as a team. As an assistant, I often worked um, with, with other assistants. I didn't know. I always thought that an assistant, you are one and you are supporting the individual you're supporting. I was one of many and so that experience allowed me to understand I can lean on others. I can rely on others. There's going to be people with a different skill set that I don't have and I should leverage it. Um, but I needed it. it. It was kind of like a painful lesson because when I was young, this was this was very, very hard for me to do. Yeah, you know, I, I think understanding all the different nuances and uh, the roads that are traveled when you're an entrepreneur. And again, to your point, uh, sometimes people have entrepreneur in their blood. It's in their DNA. They were they were meant to do it. Uh, other people are kind of either a kicked out of the nest and and forced into you uh, doing something, or b uh, they realize as they work for other people that they may you know they might be psychologically unemployable, where they're they're better off you know answering to themselves than someone else. So. Um, I completely agree with that. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to borrow that psychologically unemployable. That's yeah. so brilliant. I really, so, really something that. I, uh, my first business coach, Jeffrey Combs, that was the one thing that he taught me. Uh, I hired, he was the first coach I hired about almost 10 and a half years ago. And he said, the one thing that you need to constantly reframe yourself is that you're not employable you're psychologically unemployable because it kind of keeps you in and uh, but i've never worked for anyone so that's why it really resonated with me i've always owned my own businesses but when when someone that has worked for someone else it's it sometimes is a a challenging uh i would say transition from going from the employee mindset to the owner mindset so when you're an employee you're you're used to being handed a piece of paper that has a list of job responsibilities. You check the boxes each day, you clock in, you clock out, you go home. When you're the owner of a business, you're literally delegating. You are looking for new ways to grow and scale. Uh, you're, you're thinking bigger. People are looking to you for direction, for answers, for responses, for problem solving. So it takes on a, a whole new essence of of what it actually means to be a business owner. And, you know, I, I feel that every person has a, a, a piece of entrepreneurial spirit inside of them. Mm -hmm. But what my wife and I truly believe is that the world needs employees. The, the, we need the, we need workers, right? That we need people that that want to do those other jobs, because think about you know, Chatterboss, you know, you have the owner and then you have the people that work within the company and the organization, much like myself and my wife. Now, pivoting for a second, um, if if someone was to ask you to explain in the, the clearest and most simplest way the difference between Chatterboss where you specialize in executive level assistance compared to you know an overseas VA company where you have entry level virtual assistants what would you how would you best describe the difference between your company compared to others that are out there 
you're asking me to do something very hard to explain something clearly. I, I'm so long winded, right? I love to, to use a lot of different uh, words, but I'm going to try my best. Um, I think that first of all, I have a lot of, you know, I have to go back to your earlier point because otherwise it's going to spin in my head. We entrepreneurs need integrators and integrators need entrepreneurs, right? And so we are just so wired differently. And the goal of Chatterboss is actually to find the integrators for, um, you know, for those visionaries. And sometimes it's the, it's, it's the CEO that's the integrator that needs a visionary, right? And everything in between. So that's been a lot of fun from our interactions uh, to discover. But what makes Chatterboss different and it's it's really a conversation around what are executive assistants and how do people see them? I believe that executive assistants are this like superpower position, right? You are the right hand to the CEO. You have all of this information. It's super powerful. You get to do a lot. And it's, it's really our clients, for example, will say that their assistants feel like mini chief operating officers uh, to the extent that they support them. Now, there is still, I, I think that in the world of VAs, there is this kind of stigma of assistants are task doers, and assistants are so much more than that. But I think that what Chatterboss does is then create, you know, finds these people that are strategic partners that are going to be these super powerful executive assistants, um, gives them the tools, finds the right entrepreneurs, and then creates this model, right? Because with an assistant, you also have a backup, et cetera. Um, and you also get paired to a relationship manager then then guides your delegation process uh, and so on. And so, you know, that's the big conversation now in the space of uh, virtual executive assistants. So how did the idea of, of Chatterboss even come about? Because obviously it is so known about VAs and delegating and, and helping to integrate other people uh, within a business. You know, to that to that point, you know, what was the need that you saw or or found in the marketplace where there was a space that Chatterboss could could be brought into to solve the needs or problems that a lot of people were having? You know, another question that I love, because I wish I was the kind of entrepreneur that said, I noticed the gap in the market. I first and foremost noticed the gap in my own life, which was I can no longer be an assistant but I need something to do. And I have reached like the niche, uh, this, this, this like kind of percentage niche of, of assistance and supporting these really interesting entrepreneurs. And I'd like to continue doing that, but through having other people um, support. So that's really where the idea or like the need came out of uh, was that I love entrepreneurship. I love entrepreneurs. I wanted to do something useful for them. And I wanted to... Um, I wanted to delight people. The one thing about being a full-time chief of staff for someone that is uh, ultra powerful and, you know, ultra wealthy is that you learn a lot, but also there's a certain like expectation, right? Of your performance um, and all of that. With entrepreneurs, what I did see six years ago was that if I brought this level of support to entrepreneurs, they would be super delighted. And that was like something that made me really excited. I could bring a product that's so unexpected. And especially there is this conversation in the world, right? That virtual assistants are just task doers. What if I present them with these chief, you know, chief operating officer level people that can be a right hand? And that's been really fun. Like the magic of seeing entrepreneurs react when they get that kind of support. So what is something that has transpired in a positive way from creating Chatterboss? Obviously, there were the known known problems and the known things that you were going to solve. But what was a side effect solution that came about from this that you didn't realize would happen? That's a very good question. Um, you know, I for for myself, I didn't realize everything that it would take to build a company culture. I knew what I was looking for in terms of assistance. I kind of had an idea of the kind of client that I would like to support, but I didn't realize how much work it would take to build these healthy relationships. Also, I think that entrepreneurs, you know, there is a lot of 
ourselves in the company that we build, like psychologically, right? And so I feel like I also got a lot of healing in my own personality through having an organization, right? Because a company ends up being this like amplified version of your like strengths and weaknesses. And you can like totally see in the culture, oh yeah, that's just that's just me, right? I'm bringing that to the space. So it's been like, you know, also like very therapeutic, right? Something that came out, but also because I needed to figure out healthy ways to delegate. And at first they were really unhealthy. Um, it also allowed me then to start having our teams coach other entrepreneurs how to delegate uh, in a healthy way. And so now there is this kind of coaching component to it that's been born out of that. Now, so I want you to speak to two different people. So you have person A who, you know, necessarily isn't new to entrepreneurship, but, you know, they're the person that's between 50 to a hundred thousand dollars a year in business. And then you have the more established uh, entrepreneur business owner at a quarter million dollars a year uh, or more um, to person A and person B. I think a lot of people are sometimes fearful of outsourcing, handing the baton off to someone else because as the adage goes, no one cares about your business more than you do. And you know, this is something that Nancy and I have learned. We've we've been outsourcing more and more, we've been hiring more and more, and it's allowed us to grow more and more, but it it took us time to get there. So to the person A who is new and is thinking about, okay, when is the right time for me to start outsourcing? And then person B, who has the monetary means to outsource, but is afraid to speak to those two different people and and what message do you have for them? Yeah, absolutely. So my belief is that entrepreneurs or, or my observation from watching entrepreneurs over the years is that entrepreneurs believe that there is the right time to start delegating and the right time to start bringing on an assistant. And that right time is right at the intersection of, I have enough time, but not so much time anymore. I have some resources, but not, you know, but not too many, but, you know, I, I can finally uh, afford it. Um, and the kind of, they're looking for this perfect time to start delegating. So person A, is in the category of what entrepreneurs often consider to be like the too early stage. And that means I've just started my business or or I've been operating for a little bit of time. I don't have all of the resources that I want yet. And so I'm going to keep the administrative part of the business with myself. And they believe that it's too early because they have a lot of time. They can do these things and they don't feel like the, the price is justified. What we know about administrative burden that entrepreneurs at any stage of their business spend anywhere from 30 to 60% of their work week bogged down with administrative tasks is that in those beginning stages, if you start to train yourself that you are the assistant in your business, you fly past this like two right moment and you go to then what entrepreneurs consider too late. And sometimes the individual that you said, right, this individual B sometimes sees themselves as too late. Things are going really fast. I can't slow down enough to train anybody. I needed the help yesterday. I didn't get it. And so now I'm kind of overwhelmed and I don't know what decision to make. So I just keep carrying the burden on my own. The truth is the right time is really right now because the 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 administrative burden is birthed with the birth of your idea, right? So the first thing that you do is you buy a domain, you register all the things, right? It's all of these administrative pieces. And the beauty about Chatterboss is that we're designed to support entrepreneurs at these different stages. If you're person A and you're starting out, you can delegate just one hour a week. That is good to start flexing your delegation muscle so that as your business grows, you can delegate two hours, three hours, you're setting yourself up for success. And of course, the entrepreneur that has a lot going on and they still haven't gotten help. Yes, of course, they need to get help. They're just going to need to practice patience integrating this person because there's going to be some, you know, a, a number of systems that this person has to learn. So good. And and again, it's a, it's a message that everybody needs to hear because 
at, at a certain point and a, a certain time in our businesses, uh, it's going to require doing uncomfortable things, right? And for some people, that first outsourcing position is really uncomfortable because it's the first time that you're actually, as I mentioned before, handing the baton off and entrusting someone else. But you know, having a company like Chatterboss by your side that obviously, you know, is beyond skilled in the arena of of helping those business owners grow and scale, it becomes an essential part of your business. And most of the reason why people aren't growing and scaling is because they're not doing the necessary things to grow and scale. And outsourcing is becoming one of those things that will enable you to take some of those things off your plate. My wife always says this, you can't see the label from inside the jar. And mm. so many people are just inside the jar. So you don't know what's going on on the outside. And having a company like yours running right alongside of that business is going to allow them to do so. So um, Valerie, before I get to my final question, if someone is looking to learn more about Chatterboss uh, or if they're a right fit for what your company provides, first, tell people where they can go to find out more about you. And and second, um, who is the best fit for who you guys serve? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to chatterboss.com, B-O-S-S, and you can do one of two things. You can schedule a consultation. I like to say that it is um, it is like a free strategy session. Even if you're not ready right now, every business needs an assistant. So if you don't have one, at the very least, the strategy conversation will allow you to start preparing of what it what it takes to create a delegation plan and start um, delegating out the, the the administrative part of your business. The second thing that you can do on our website is take the delegation self-assessment. And what that will show you, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about, you know, what it takes to delegate when the delegation self-assessment allows you to understand your unique delegation gaps. Where can you be more effective as a delegator? And what I've learned is that, first of all, I have, I have not yet. So this is a challenge for the listeners. I have not met any delegator in the top 10% of delegators. If you're out there, I want to know because I want to meet you. Um, I'm not there either. And, but someone must be right. They're somewhere. So I'd love to learn who they are, but also what I know is that um, delegation is a muscle and we all can get better and improve upon it. And so that's what this assessment will tell you. And I hope, um, you know, you take the time to take it at this time, we're also giving away um, free delegation coaching sessions. So it would be very exciting to connect. Awesome. So all the information that Valerie just spoke about will be in the description of this episode. So you're not going to have to look too far. So Valerie, final question before we sign off today, what does success truly mean to you? For me, success is to feel peaceful and joyful in my life. Um, yes, to have the opportunity to have the white space to connect with the people in my life. And as a business owner, to run my business for the pleasure of it, right? So that I am, uh, I am creating, uh, but I'm also getting, I'm also getting joy. You'll never work a day in your life when you love what you do. And that oh. is, Something that Nancy and I live by. Valerie, thank you so, so much for being here today. Uh, I can't wait for the listeners to give me the feedback from this and for them to obviously reach out to you. You have so many free and available resources. I'm I'm really going to encourage anyone that's listening that is looking to grow and scale and is interested to learn about Chatterboss, uh, please do reach out to Valerie. And obviously the link to her website to schedule those assessments are going to be in the description. So Valerie, thank you again for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So again, as always, wherever you're listening to this to and from, please leave us a rating and review. Let us know what you would like to hear more of. And don't forget, you can start your networking and marketing made simple podcast subscription today for only $2.99 a month. You can release a bonus Friday episode outside of the two episodes you're already getting on Mondays and Thursdays. So to do so, there'll be a link in the description of this episode to unlock that bonus episode every single week, which is on Friday. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your days and I'll talk to you next time. Bye everyone.
Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved, or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.